One liberal county in Texas is also investigating Ron DeSantis. They are accusing him of, quote, leaving migrants to fend for themselves in Martha's Vineyard. Here to respond, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. You know, the great irony in all of this is if we use the left's definition of racism and xenophobia, they're it. They define it based on their actions in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, what they're missing is Joe Biden has been flying and busing illegal immigrants every day all over the country and in the dark of night just leaving them in the middle of the street. So uh, why are they only now paying attention to 50 people that you sent? Well, Sean, it's really frustrating because, you know, you've been covering this millions of people since Biden's been president illegally coming across the southern border. Did they freak out about that? No. You've had migrants die in the Rio Grande. You had 50 uh, die in Texas in a trailer because they were being neglected. Was there a freak out about that? No, there wasn't. You've had criminal aliens get across that southern border and victimize Americans, killing some, raping some. Was there any type of outrage about that? No. And then, of course, we know fentanyl deaths are at an all-time high. Where's that fentanyl coming from? Over the, it's coming over the open southern border. It's only when 50 get put into Martha's Vineyard, which wasn't saying they didn't want this. They said they wanted this. They said they were a sanctuary jurisdiction. These were people who were basically destitute and then put in a situation where they could have succeeded, but that was all virtue signaling. And not only did they not welcome them, they deported them the next day with the National Guard. Give me a break. Yeah, and by the way, just for the record, this was voluntary. All migrants were put up in hotels, given accommodations. They were fed, they were showered, they were offered haircuts and, and any other services that they were needed, correct? Yeah, not only that, they all signed consent forms to go. And then the vendor that, that is doing this for Florida provided them with a packet that had a map of Martha's Vineyard. It had the numbers for different services on Martha's Vineyard. And then it had numbers for the overall agencies in Massachusetts that handle things involving immigration and refugees. So it was clearly voluntary. And all the other nonsense you're hearing um, is just not true. And, and why wouldn't they want to go, given where they were? They were in really, really bad shape. Uh, and they got to be cleaned up, everything treated well, and then put in a situation. Because, Sean, there are jobs available in Martha's Vineyard. There is lodging available in Martha's Vineyard. Had they lived up to their what they build themselves at as a sanctuary jurisdiction, they could have absorbed those people without a problem. But here's the thing. They said they didn't have housing. They said they couldn't accommodate. Like, let's just say that's true for a minute. Well, what does that mean for these poor towns in Texas? What does it mean for these other places across the country uh, that are seeing influx? What does it mean to these small towns that Biden has dumped so many people in? And so I think what we've been able to do is show that this border is a disaster. Biden has failed on this as much or more than on any other policy. And now people are talking about it. And we want solutions as Americans. We want to make sure that Trump's policies of remain in Mexico can be reinstituted so we can get control over what's going on down there. You know, Governor, it's kind of hard to fathom. 19 months ago, you're right. Our borders were secure. We had stay in Mexico. Uh, we got we eliminated catch and release. Now we have process release. Give a free phone. Uh, you get preferential treatment. You don't get a COVID vaccine mandate. And then you have free transportation to the state of your choice. This is madness. We had our borders controlled. We had 1.4% inflation, not 8.5%. Uh, we didn't have, we're now paying double the amount for a gallon of gasoline. We didn't have that problem. We wouldn't have had a disaster in Afghanistan. All of this has happened in 19 months. What do you see as the answer beyond 50 days from now when, when Americans go to the voting booth and you're up for re-election? Well, Sean, I think we should point out, you know, they accuse the governors of Arizona, Texas, and me of political stunts in terms of dealing with illegal immigration. But the biggest stunt was Biden coming into office and reversing Trump's policies, not because Trump's policies weren't working. He reversed them because he wanted to virtue signal to his base and he wanted to show that he thought Donald Trump was bad. And that's why he reversed it. And he reversed it knowing what would end up happening. Uh, and so he has done 
he has pulled the biggest political stunt. Look, I think people need to press the case on this in the midterms. We know the inflation, the economy, as you said, is going to be a big issue. Crime is going to be a huge issue. But this immigration and border, I think, is now a front burner issue. And I think this is one where Republicans have the advantage without question. So run on it. And then if we do get majorities in the Congress, Sean, they need to do something with that power to hold Biden accountable on this issue. I think borders, I think energy, I think the economy, I think lower taxes, your right law and order, parental rights and education. All of this is on the ballot in 50 days, and I hope the American people see this for what it is. There's a part of me that doesn't really want to ask you this question, because I don't think Gavin Newsom is particularly bright, and every time he deals with you, he comes out on the wrong end of it. But I'll ask anyway. I would actually love to see him explain why he shut down Californians. They couldn't go out to eat, but he went out to eat. He let his kids have in-school education. Every other kid that didn't have a private school education, they were forced to study remote. Uh, I'd like to, him to explain his 13.5% state income tax to your 0% and his sanctuary state law-breaking to your maintaining the law and order. And I don't know what he meant by the kidnapping comment. Maybe you can tell me what that meant, because I have no clue. Well, Sean, we've had an influx of people from California, and they're moving because they're dissatisfied with what's gone, gone on over there. Um, I think that the only issue, you know, anytime you're there, you got to worry about all the different things with crime and the homelessness. But you also got to worry about, could they even keep the lights on for some type of an event? I mean, they seem to have a lot of problems with that as well. So we're happy with what we're doing in Florida. And I think at the end of the day, Sean, people can politically preen. They can say all this stuff. But look how people behave. Look how people vote with their feet. And since I've been governor, it's been unmistakable. People look for freedom, and we're the first place they look. And people have come not just from New York, New Jersey, as you know, that's always happened, not just from the Midwest, which has always happened, even from the Pacific coast of this country, going all the way across North America to be able to live in the state of Florida. How, and how we're many, proud that we've been that symbol for many people. Governor, uh, for the first time in California's history, they've had a net decrease in population. How many new people are moving to Florida on a daily basis? Do you have the exact number? I don't have the exact, but we've led the nation in net in migration. And on net, we've had over 225,000 the last two years, probably on average. And we've had more wealth move into Florida than has ever moved into an individual state over a similar period of time in American history, even adjusted for inflation. And oh, by the way, Sean, who's losing the most population and the most wealth? California, New York, Illinois. Uh, what very well said. All right, so you're out on the campaign trail. Your race is pivotal for Republicans. So is Marco Rubio's race. How do you feel your races are going? And I know you've also been doing some campaigning around the country. What are the arguments that you would make? To me, it's very simple. The list that we just went over, if you run on, how, are you better off than you were 19 months ago in terms of your energy prices in terms of border security. Are you better off with a, a state that closed down for COVID? You had kids in school in August of 2020. What are the arguments you think people should be making, Republicans should be making? Well, first here in Florida, you know, people are fired up. I mean, our, our, our voters want to come out. I think we're going to have a record setting turnout, uh, particularly amongst Republicans. And so we're looking forward to that. As you mentioned, I'm running Senator Rubio. We also have congressional races, legislative races, school board. So this is really, really important. And we're working really hard. I think we're going to do really well. But I think you nailed it across the country. Prosecute the case against what Biden has done. Things were cheaper before he was president. Your gas was cheaper. Uh, our country was safer before he was president. Hit him on the crime. And obviously, our border was more secured. And yes, I do think you pointed out the parents' rights and the education. These are huge issues because I think the left has gone so radical on this. They want to use the schools to indoctrinate uh, our kids. And that's not what the American people want. They think schools should be to educate kids, not to indoctrinate them. So hold them accountable on things like critical race theory, gender ideology, none of that stuff is appropriate in the schools, but almost every single Democrat will have to say that they support that, because that's what the far left of their base wants to see. Fascinating. No Democrat wants to be seen with Joe Biden either when he goes to campaign. Uh, I didn't finish the question. Last question. you have any interest in debating uh, good old Gavin Newsom on his record taxes, state ta income taxes? 
Well, like I said, Sean, I don't know if they can reliably keep the power on. So you go all the way out there and have a debate, and then what ends up happening you know, if they can't keep You'll the lights on? Out. So, you know, we're happy with what we're doing. You know, what I do, though, Sean, my actions speak louder than my words. There's certain people that will preen and do that. I understand. We get things done in Florida. My favorite line is, whatever you do, don't charge your electric vehicle during these hours. So you have to park it for this amount of time. That was my favorite. Governor, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.